Next, we're going to cover the topic of distance metrics. Distance is the magnitude of spatial separation between two objects. And a distance metric is just a particular way in which we choose to measure spatial separation, or the way that we measure distance. Now, we're very used to measuring straight line distance between two points. Straight line distance is referred to as Euclidean distance because the mathematician Euclid was the first to discover the formula for this kind of distance. Now, when we're doing cities on point distributions or other types of spatial distributions within urban areas, we are often interested in having a better representation of the spatial separation between two objects. Primarily, this stems from the fact that travel between two objects in the city doesn't occur in straight lines unless you're a bird or a radio signal. In those cases, straight line distance is perhaps very appropriate. But otherwise, we would like our distance metrics, our measures of spatial separation, to somehow follow the, the underlying street network in the city. In the case where a city has a very regular grid-like street network, for example, in Salt Lake City or New York City, we use a distance metric called Manhattan distance. And Manhattan distance is just the sum of the vertical distance plus the horizontal distance separating the two points. So if we have a right angle triangle, here's the right angle. The Euclidean distance is the distance along the hypotenuse. And the Manhattan distance is the distance along the two other sides. Now, that works in cities that have a regular street network. And sometimes this is a very good approximation of distance. But a lot of the times, we actually want to use actual network distance, or the shortest path along a network between two locations. For example, in this case, the Euclidean distance and the Manhattan distance provide almost equal uh, distance measurements, but both are very inaccurate in comparison to how much separation actually exists between these two locations on the street network. In order to calculate network distances, we need to use uh, shortest path algorithms, and these types of algorithms are beyond the scope of this class. So I'm not going to ask you to calculate network distances, but I do think you should intuitively understand when it's appropriate to use these three different types of distance metrics. Here we have some of the formulas for the Euclidean distance and Manhattan distance. This formula you should recognize as just the length of the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle. We see that xi minus xj is just the separation in the x dimension between the two points. So in other words, it's got this length over here. That's xi minus xj. And yi y minus yj is just the vertical dimension over here, yi minus yj. So the formula for the hypotenuse is that this is equal to the square root of the sum of the two other sides. So it's the square root of xi minus xj squared and yi minus yj squared. When we're dealing with Manhattan distance, we're just adding together these two distances. We're adding together this distance plus this distance. Now, something new that you might not have seen before are these vertical brackets. These vertical brackets are called absolute values brackets. What that means is no matter no matter the sign, positive or negative, of the things inside these vertical brackets, we're always going to report the positive value. So in this case, xi minus xj, where we have xi is less than xj, is going to be a negative value. But if we put that uh, sorry, xi minus xj will be a negative value because xi is less than xj. But if we put xi minus xj in these absolute values brackets, that is going to be a positive value. 
So the absolute value of, say, minus 2, because the distance here is 2, but xi minus xj. So let's say this is 0, 1, 2. xi minus xj is going to be minus 2. But when we have that in absolute brackets, that actually equals to 2. And similarly, yi minus yj, 0, 1, 2, is going to be minus 2. And therefore, yi minus yj in absolutes is equal to 2. So the Manhattan distance, in this case, is equal to 2 plus 2 equals 4. When we're dealing with spatial data, we also have to recognize when it is appropriate to use straight line distance versus great circle distance. Great circle distance is the shortest path between two points on the surface of the globe. And a lot of you are familiar with great circle distances because you've seen the routes taken by airplanes between cities far apart. They never take lines, straight lines between those two cities. Instead, you see these big arches. And that's because the, the path following the arch, even though it appears to be a much longer distance when we project the map onto a plane, the distance around the globe is actually shorter than the straight line distance uh, between, two, between two points on, on a projected map surface. This is due to the distortion in the map surface. Now, this distortion, the, the amount of distortion, or the difference between the great circle length and the straight line distance, is small when, we're, when two points are close together. For example, if you're doing an analysis of uh, a point distribution within a single city or state, the straight line distance is a fairly good approximation of the true distance between those two distance, uh, those locations in your map. But if you're dealing at a global scale, a country scale, or a continental scale, we really have to consider whether or not we should be using great circle distances in place of these straight line distances.